Hey, today I'm going to show you how you can make a plaid overall dress just like this one for yourself. Let's get to it. These are the materials that we're going to be working with. Okay, some terminology. So when I say the bib, this is what I'm talking about. And when I say the skirt, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are the five measurements that you're going to need in order to draft your pattern for your dress. When you're taking your measurements, remember that it's better to overestimate than to underestimate because you can always go back and take off what is too much. Decide how wide you want your bib to be. Mine is 10 inches. Decide how long you want your bib to be. Mine is 11 inches. From the 11 inch mark you made for the length of your bib, decide how long you want your skirt to be. Mine is 18 inches. Then you want to measure the widest part of your hips and remember not to pull the tape too tightly because you want to leave room for your fabric. I got 17.5. Now you want to measure the width of your butt, and remember you don't want to pull the measuring tape too tightly. My measurement was 22.5. Fold your fabric in half. Since our fabric is in half, we want to divide measurements A, D as in David, and E by 2. Then you want to measure a half inch from the top of the fabric, like so. Just below the half inch mark we previously made, mark off the measurement you got for measurement A divided by 2. This will be the width of your bib. Then from this line, make a mark for the length of your bib, which is measurement B. To make sure that your line is straight, you want to just start from the first line and make sure that the width is the same all the way down until you reach the final length of your bib. Under the length of the bib, leave a little space and then mark off measurement D divided by 2. The reason why you're leaving a little space is because we're going to draw a curved line in order to connect the length of the bib to the start of the skirt. Then from this line, you want to place a mark for measurement C. To make sure that this line is straight, you want to make sure that from the line that you drew to mark the top of your skirt, the width is the same all the way down until you get to the end of your skirt. Then connect the points in order to make a straight line. Now you want to draw a straight line for the bottom of your skirt. In order to make sure that the line is straight, you want to make sure that the distance from this line to the bottom of the skirt is the same all the way across. Then connect the points that you made. Then I added a half inch seam allowance all around the pattern and then afterwards I pinned it down so that when I cut the pattern out, it'll be nice and symmetrical. So you want to repeat the same steps for the back pattern of your overall dress. And one thing that might be easy is to just place the front pattern on top of the back pattern and then add the difference when it comes to the width of your butt, which would be measurement E. Then you want to add the seam allowance lines and then you want to pin it down and cut it out. After you cut out your pattern, make sure to add the seam allowance lines to the other side of the pattern because remember we only did half of each pattern. So do the same on both pieces. Then you want to hem all around the bib as well as the top part of the skirt for both patterns. Lay your back pattern down so that the right side is facing up. And then take your front pattern so that the right side is facing the right side of the bottom pattern. Then you want to connect the two sides together and pin it down. You're only going to do this on one side. Sew 
so after you sew remember to do a top stitch so fold the flap over and top stitch it then you want to hem the bottom of the dress Then connect the other side of the dress, make sure that the dress is still inside out, pin the two sides together and sew. Don't forget to top stitch. This is what your dress should look like once you've sewn both sides shut. Now you want to make your straps. You want to make sure that your straps are wide enough to fit through the buckle. My straps ended up being 21.25 inches long and then 3 inches wide. But yours may vary according to the size of your buckle. You want to fold your straps in half and then pin them down at the edges. Sew along the edges just before the pins like so. After you sew your straps, Turn them inside out and this is what they should look like. Now you want to fold the bottom of the straps about a half an inch and then attach it to the back of the overalls. Make sure the overalls are inside out. Pin it down, pin down the two straps and then sew right above the pin. Repeat this step with the other strap, like so. This is what your straps should look like once you're finished. I want the top part of my bib to be a bit more sturdy for when I have to attach the overall buckles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a separate piece underneath the bib. In order to make this piece it needs to be the same width of the bib. And then for the length, my length was about, about 4 inches. You want to fold the piece in half and then pin it down, sort of like how we did with the straps. After you pin it down, you want to sew and then turn it inside out. It should look something like this once you've finished. And then you want to attach this piece to the inside of the bib. So you only really need to pin it down along the top, like so. And then when you're finished, just sew the top part of the bib as well as the sides and it should look like this once you have finished sewing so it's, it'll be nice and sturdy for the overall buckles now what you want to do is you want to install your overall buckles just follow the instructions on the packet this is what mine looks like looks like now that it's finished afterwards I basically installed my overall buckles by following the, di the directions on the packet and my straps were kind of long so what I did was I just folded them down and then I connected the end to the back of the bib and then I sewed it down again I top stitched it and I actually like it this way because it, it's more sturdy and it looks kind of cool also, I tried on my overall dress and then I decided to take in the sides because it was a little too wide and I also decided to make it a little shorter because it was too long. The next thing you want to do is you want to make your pockets. So I decided to make the, bo the bottom of my pockets round and I basically folded it in about a half inch around and then I pinned it down and then I sewed. My pockets are about seven inches long and about six inches wide. And you can decide how long and wide you want your pockets, but that's what I have. So fold it about half an inch all around, pin it down, and then sew. And this is what your pockets will look like. The next thing you want to do is try on your dress and then make any changes if you need to. You want to line up your pocket with the seam, the side seams. Decide how high you want your pocket to be. Take your fabric marker and place a point along where you want your pocket to start and end. Then you want to trace the line on your fabric and decide where you want the other pocket to be placed and sew it on and this is what it will look like. 
and this is your final product.